Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to some more FNAF news. Last episode, if you missed it, we talked about a whole bunch of topics, ranging from the FNAF movie, to some brand new merchandise, to a brand new FNAF attraction coming out later this year, as well as some updates on some of the books. It was a lot, but I also hinted that there was still more news to discuss, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in today's video. We got some updates on some of the fanverse games, including Pop Goes Arcade and The Joy of Creation. We got a whole bunch of news on merchandise, including a brand new wave of FNAF products by Funko and some future products by U2s. And also some small updates on some of the FNAF ports, because it's been a while since we last talked about those. So if you are excited, hit the like button. If you're new, please subscribe to the channel. We talk about FNAF news all the gosh dang time. And subscribing is the best way to guarantee you'll stay up to date with what's going on in the FNAF franchise. So to kick this video off, let's talk about some quick news regarding the FNAF ports. It has been a long time since we last talked about the FNAF ports because they kind of finished porting all the FNAF games. But there has been some small news about them, so I wanted to throw this portion of the video in to let you know that they're still getting updates. Recently, they've been pushing the subtitles update for all of the games across all the platforms, which basically gives subtitles to a whole bunch of different languages, including English, French, German, Dutch, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, Russian, Japanese, Chinese, and Korean. The subtitles update also has some small bug fixes, but I'm not going to read off all those lists. Moving on now to the Fazbear fanverse, let's kick it off by the joy of creation because it has been a long, long time since we last had an update on this game. King Carter over on Twitter supplying this portion of FNAF news, saying Nixon has confirmed in his Discord server that he is now allowed to work on the Joy of Creation Ignited Collection again. He says he's considering new models for the Ignited animatronics, abandoning the Help Wanted ports that were originally showcased in 2020. This is the screenshot of his message saying, Since I'm now legally allowed to work on IC again, I've been thinking about something. I don't really want to use the Help Wanted models as a base for the Ignited's. Maybe it'd be a good idea to find someone in the community that'd be willing to to create some nice base models that I could then texture. Just an idea, does anyone here know skilled modelers looking for a job or something? For reference, these are the animatronics that we got showcased back in 2020, Ignited Freddy and Chica, and apparently the Withers in Help Wanted were used as a base for these characters. But it looks like now Nick could be abandoning that idea, we're just gonna have to wait and see uh, how this continues. Kane also said worth mentioning that the 2020 designs, the these designs were already submitted to merch companies. It's what the Ignited Freddy U2s will be based on, so I doubt Nixon will be changing the designs of the characters, probably just the model so he has more control slash ownership of them. So that's certainly interesting. We do have a bit of U2s news again later on in the video that may touch upon this, but whether or not they're going to have their models change, again we're just going to have to wait and see, but I am very relieved to know that T-Jock is being walked on again. Moving on now to Pop Goes Arcade. We got a whole bunch of info from Kane. Okay, got some confirmations for Pop Goes Arcade's release. It will go on Steam paid only with all of the new content. It will, eventually, at least, get achievements, trading cards, badges, and more. The original game will stay on Game Jolt, but won't be updated anymore. He then went on to answer some of the most commonly asked questions. The cost? Probably $5, same as FNAF 1. When? Probably sometime in June. Ports? Yes. Eventually, mobile first, and then consoles. This is, this is big. I mean, <laughs> finally, we're getting a fanverse game on Steam. This is huge, and it's coming out, you know, sometime next month, probably. It's absolutely insane news, but we're not done just yet with Pop Goes Arcade. Kane also showed off some of the achievement icons he's made for the game. Invincible, win a battle with only one HP. Beastmaster, complete the bestiary. Gatecrasher, unlock the gate to the dead forest. And this is one of my favorites. Be polite, 
be efficient, complete all of BB's hit lists. And then Kane also showed off some of the profile backgrounds that you get with Pop Goes Arcade. The top one is the artwork for the Dead Forest, as well as the Machinist. Second one is the arcade machine, and the third one is the game area. He also showed off some of the possible trading cards of BB and also Pop Goes outside the inn. Everything I just mentioned is compiled in a giant devlog posted over on the Game Jolt page for Pop Goes Arcade. So if you want to go give it a full read, I highly suggest doing that. It'll be linked down below in the description. And now let's move on to the brand new tie-dye wave of FNAF products by Funko. So these boys were leaked uh, quite a long time ago, actually, but we finally got a proper look at them. So these are the action figures. As you can see, tie-dye Freddy, tie-dye Bonnie, tie-dye Chica, tie-dye Foxy, and also a exclusive tie-dye spring trap. And then we also get a quick look at some of the plushies. You got tie-dye Chica, Foxy, Freddy, and also Fun Time Foxy, as well as tie-dye Bonnie, who just recently got a full picture by himself. Look at him go. I've seen mixed reactions. I think the colors look good, but I think a lot of people are still upset that it's just more recolors of the original FNAF 1 characters. Because we had the black light wave, then we had the spring colorways, you know, wave, and now we have the tie-dye wave. It's a lot of recolors. But personally, I think the colors on these guys look pretty solid. Granted, they're not really tie-dye since one character has one or two specific colors on them. Like, it looks like Freddy's kind of pink, Bonnie purple, Chica yellow, Foxy looks like a mix of blue and gray, Springtrap yellow and green. Like, they, they're not really tie-dye they have one or two main colors that they stick to. I do think they would have looked better if they had full tie-dye designs. At least the boxes look cool and actually have a tie-dye design, you know? But yeah, that is the brand new tie-dye wave of plushies and figures releasing maybe sometime soon. I mean, as you can see, they already have the products finished. So I'd imagine pretty soon they're gonna, you know, be fully released. And to end the video off, let's talk about some news regarding FNAF and U2s. Because already we've gotten a lot lot of products. We got the FNAF 1 gang, I just did a review, if you missed that, go check it out. Not too long ago, the Security Breach Wave also released, and now, we just have a whole bunch more news, so let's take it slow and let's start off with the first news. So the first piece of news is that apparently U2s has the license to create figures based off of the book characters. The person who asked this question specifically talked about FNAF The Silver Eyes trilogy, but I think it's also likely that they have the license to make characters from the Fazbear Fright books, because they simply just say, for the books. So super interesting, maybe sometime down the line we can see figures of some of the characters from again, the original trilogy of books, or Fazbear Frights, maybe Tales from the Pizzaplex as well, it's gonna be interesting. It also looks like someone has been dropped from the fanverse wave of figures? Someone asked about what characters were in the fanverse wave, and they said Pop Goes Candy, and then someone secret. Now, we do know for a fact, 100% fact, that Ignited Freddy and Flumpty Bumpty were well, gonna be in the wave, because they were leaked a couple months back. And it looks like now, maybe one of them got dropped? Now, it could be Ignited Freddy, because Nixon, again, as we mentioned earlier on in the video, was thinking about changing the design or just base model of the character in the game. So maybe they're holding off until they get a final design, I don't know. Or, and I think this is personally maybe the more likely option is that Flumpty got dropped because of the whole situation with the creator of Flumpty being outed as you know let's just say a not very nice cool person so there's kind of an argument for both sides we're just gonna have to wait and see how this progresses in the future moving on to the next piece of news the Fazbear Fanverse YouTube's figures are likely gonna be out in August or September and then we also got hints to future figures from FNAF YouTube's it seems like directly Directly confirming a purple guy U2's in the future, which has me excited because they don't say William Afton, they say the purple guy. So if we can get a figure of like the 8-bit sprite of purple guy, that's gonna be so funny. And then they also said including some you named, which the person who asked the question said Sun and Moon, DJ Music Man, and Vanessa. So those three all have a chance of being figures. U2's also confirmed that a Springtrap plush has been designed, which basically confirms we're gonna be getting a Springtrap plushie at some point in the future, because why would they design it if they're not gonna make it? They also confirmed that a Sun and Moon figure is in the works. I also wanna point out that they say a Sun and Moon figure, 
as opposed to the person who asked the question who said a sun and moon figures. So it seems that when we do get this figure, it's going to be two and one, just like the plushie. And finally, for U2's news, someone said, who else is in the security breach wave two collection besides purple guy and sun and moon? And U2's replied saying, we saw a lot of requests for Vanessa, so she will probably join the lineup. We're also planning on some non-SB characters like Dreadbear, a Springtrap plushie, a Dreadbear figure, a Vanessa figure, a Sun and Moon figure. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot of gosh dang products, but honestly, they're super high quality, at least the FNAF 1 characters are, so I'm very excited to see what more they have planned in the future. Because even though expensive, again, they're high quality, I love them. I'm going to keep buying them. But that's going to do it for FNAF News today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.